Last time on Ben Bosses for Bonds. We took down a giant spider a bunch of times and only messed up once. Okay. Gonna, oh my god, what the f We also ripped off its leg, gouged out its eye, and created an extremely powerful magical staff because RuneScape. Anyways, let's get into it. But before we go any further, if you could take the time to hit the subscribe button, like the video, and stay until the end of this video because I have some very, very good news to share with all of you, I would greatly appreciate it. Anyways, let's get this video started. In the scorching expanse of the Caridian Desert, where shifting sands conceal the secrets of a time since left to ruin, lies the gateway to one of Gilinor's most challenging threats. Sleeping deep within the heart, a being born from the Anima Mundi slowly awakens as fighting from the four factions above wage on. As the Defender of the Heart awakens, someone must rise to the challenge, to put this giant back at rest. Welcome to Telos the Warden. In order to take on such a formidable foe, we must first prove our worth by defeating the four generals from the factions of Zaros, Zamorak, Saren, and Sliske. These generals hold the key to the Inner Sanctum where our challenge awaits. Similar to the Araxites, Telos utilizes an enrage mechanic where each kill becomes more difficult. While our goal of earning bonds remains the same, we will be chasing after another goal this episode. The Warden title. Let's get into it. It's going to be really interesting uh, to commentate this while paying attention because... Um, these mechanics get a little taxing. <laughs> At a higher enrage, you know, when it's low enrage, I can goof off, I can talk about it, do whatever, but uh, yeah, when it's this high of an enrage, it gets a little, little tedious. So if I don't have a lot of commentary here, I'm sorry, but that was a really good phase one. That was only like 40 seconds, 41 seconds. That was pretty good. Yeah, I missed that. That's a shame. That's okay, though. I really didn't know where we were at in terms of the rotation. Um, it Basically, how this works is he does three auto attacks, and then he'll use a special attack. Um, so you do have to count the autos, um, and obviously the higher the enrage is, the worse off it gets. I just clicked on my inventory. Oh, this is going great. This phase is going to be a lot of fun, because the damage output for Necromancy is ridiculous. And this red beam just makes it so that we hit like a truck regardless of what style we're using, so this is going to be really fun. Oh yeah, it would probably help if I had my Scrimshaw on, my god book, whatever you want to call it. Yeah, that phase took me 22 seconds, that's ridiculous. This phase is pretty straightforward, I just have to pay attention for the uh, bomb at the second pad and we'll be okay. Um, yeah, I missed that. That sucks. Okay, well, you know, I, again, am really bad at <laughs> counting auto attacks, but you know, it's fine. We're just going to clear these golems real quick and then we'll uh, head over to the second pad. Um, or font, whatever you want to call it. There's a bunch of different names. They all mean the same thing. This weird gyroscopic thing that is doing the thing. Yeah. <laughs> so you'll notice that I stalled there at the uh, transition from the first font into the second one. Um, that just is to ensure that we don't have to deal with the um, bomb attack that he does. It's called so much power or whatever the hell he says. Uh, it, really, it's just to make sure that we can use Disruption Shield or uh, just completely avoid the mechanic altogether. Otherwise, um, you can take a really big hit 
off of it, uh, and that scales with the enrage. At this enrage, it would pretty much be my entire hit points. Um, so it's really good to stall that, and then you just stun as soon as he uh, enters into the second rotation. Uh, that happens at 75,000 hit points. That was close. Oh my god, that was a 10k I just took to the face. <laughs> and that's why we stun at the second font. Um, it's a lot easier to just eat up at phase 5 than it is to deal with golems and everything else during that second font. Um, so yeah, I'm glad you guys got to see what I was talking about. <laughs> So now we're just going to kill off these golems. Uh, it's going to charge this other sphere, gyroscopic sphere here. Uh, we'll activate that whenever Telos has charged up a really massive attack. Uh, otherwise, it's an insta-kill mechanic, and we hate insta-kills. So, uh, yeah, I'm just going to continue to damage him, and once that mechanic comes up, if it does, I will uh, talk about it then. I'm just gonna play the safe I'm just gonna yeah so so I uh, you can I could have probably gotten the kill but I would much rather make sure that I actually kill the boss and not die to the insta kill mechanic there so anyways that's the first kill down 448 and of course this is the loot we get fucking seven seeds I risked my life for 5k Son of a- It's okay, Ben. Everything is okay. You know, sometimes the bosses don't- they- they aren't nice. It's okay, you know. We're- we're gonna get the title. Everything is gonna be worth it. We're not after money right now. You know, this is a weird episode. We're not focusing on just the bonds. We're- tr we're trying to, you know, get- get the title. Everything is fine. Just make your tea. Just relax a little bit. We're gonna finish this tea, and then we're gonna try again. Alrighty, so I feel like I didn't really explain any of the mechanics during the first kill, so this is the second kill. Let's get into some of the nitty gritty, shall we? Uh, so with the beams, the first phase's beam is not really going to be seen because I kill it too quickly. But if it does happen to spawn, what we'll do is, if we stand in it, it will consume some of our prayer and some other thing, I forget. I think it's run energy, um, uh, but it will give us adrenaline. Um, and as you can see, the beam did spawn, but the phase is done. I mean, there's no sense in me going into the beam, um, except the fact that I'm talking about it right now is making me not phase very quickly. Um, so the first beam just gives you adrenaline. That's really all you need to know. Here in phase two, the second beam is going to be... Uh, ah, okay, well, this is good, actually. I'm really glad the beam spawned where it did. This beam is going to cause us to not deal as much damage when we're standing in it, but it also makes it so that we don't take as much damage either. Uh, so it's just less damage overall, which is really great. Uh, especially during the higher enrages, because obviously during the higher enrages, you're going to have higher damage overall from both the attacks and the mechanics. But also for players who are just getting into the boss, this beam really helps with um, making sure that you're not panicking about losing a bunch of health really quickly. So for that, phase two is actually really good to uh, kind of get your footing at Telos, regardless of the enrage. Again, that, that is part of the reason why this phase is taking a little bit longer than it did in the first kill, is just because I wanted to demonstrate the beams for this kill so that you guys kind of have an idea of what's going on. That way it's not just me running around like a headless chicken and getting mad at the drops, but we're going to move past the C drop, okay? So phase three, I kind of explained this during the first kill. Um, 
the red beam is going to make it so that we deal a lot more damage, but the downside is we also take a lot more damage. Um, that doesn't really matter when we're dealing so much damage that it's phased within seconds. I mean, you know, I think the first one was 20-ish seconds. I don't really remember, but this one is still not very long. I think this, what, 30? Max. So even while talking and explaining everything, um, I was able to, you know, phase that pretty quick. Uh, during the fourth phase, there is no beam, but then during the fifth phase, there are all of the beams. Uh, so you get access to all three and you can decide which one you want to utilize. Uh, so I actually got that one. Let's go. Okay. I know what I'm doing. Uh, <laughs> So that that's just to kind of explain what's going on with this fight. Um, hopefully you guys don't mind me just blabbing on right now because um, I just want to make sure for those of you who either have not done Telos or don't play RuneScape at all because I do know there are a few of you who answered the community post that said you don't play RuneScape whatsoever. Um, I just want you to know what's kind of going on with the boss fight. Um, so I will go ahead and shut up unless if something interesting happens with the rest of this kill. Um, because, wow, I've been talking for, oh my god, a minute. Whew. Okay. Okay, I got that disruption shield perfect, otherwise that was gonna probably make me sign. It's really funny because I bring the Vitality Pot for that exact reason, but I never use it. Oh, this aura is about to run out of time. Let me just go ahead and deactivate this and then, uh... Okay, we had to wait until the, uh, fifth phase to reactivate it, but, uh, we'll just reactivate it really quick. Don't do this. Don't do what I'm doing here. Don't do aura management in the middle of a very high stress kill. So we're just gonna hop into the adrenaline gain beam just because for starters we want to use our ultimate abilities but also we want to make sure that we have our defensives um so having the extra adrenaline is going to let us use debilitate and reflect and then i'm just gonna sit here in the black beam for a minute to make sure that i don't take excessive damage and then i'll just hop back into the blue beam to make sure that i'm getting enough adrenaline to deal a lot of damage Yeah, and we're just going to activate this to make sure that I don't have to deal with the insta-kill mechanic. And that will be our second kill completed. Enrage 458% officially done. Wow. See, this drop is more like it. Alrighty, and this will be Enrage 467% completed. Uh, we'll see what we get this time. Um, yeah, okay, Dragonstones. Alright, this one is about to be done as well. Why? Oh, I didn't invoke death. Uh, I really should activate that, but, uh, yeah, okay. Okay, it was a little close, but not the worst I've ever done. Um, yeah, that's, uh, 476 done. Alrighty, so I'm just going to sit here, we're going to use Split Soul, and that should be 488% completed. We do have the chance to get to 500 uh, off of the next Enrage increase. Of course it would do 499. Oh, that was my last food. Oh, there's my sign. Okay, uh, this one is going to be a little close. 
You know, it wouldn't be a bin video if I didn't die, right? Like, like that's that's my whole gimmick. We'll see how this goes. I think oh, I'm probably just gonna blue beam and then Cade. I think that's gonna be the best choice here. Is just to Cade and then try to deal as much to oh, perfect, it's a red beam. This is going to be a little close. Oh my god! Oh, what does that mean? I've never died as I've killed it before. <laughs> Alright, moment of truth. Okay, so you don't lose it, but I'm going to claim it because I am down a mill already and I'm not going to risk the, the two mil I've made. Alrighty, so this is it. The 500% enrage kill. Grats to uh, Blazelight on the pet for Raziel. That's exciting. Um... I may not be commentating much for this kill because I'm going to be uh, really focusing. So um, if there's just a music bed from this point forward, that's probably why. Um, so enjoy the kill. Um, it, or if I die this kill, you're never going to hear this anyway. So it doesn't really matter. Uh, but yeah, this should be it. and now he's stunned and we can just go ahead and finish this off with the last 15k and that is 500% enrage completed we have gotten the warden title holy crap this is great I cannot believe we finally did this oh my god this has been something I've been working on since I started to really be okay at PVM and honestly, it's only because of necromancy that I was able to do this. This is fantastic. Wow. Okay, let's let's go ahead and uh, switch over the title. Oh my god, the title looks so clean. Look at it. Holy crap, this is so good. And with that, our journey to obtaining the Warden title is officially concluded. This has been a goal that I have sought after since 2021, and while I pushed it off for quite some time, the release of Necromancy has really reignited my passion for PVM on RuneScape 3. Before we end this video, I want to thank you all for watching this far, and I'm excited to share a secret that I've been holding on to for a few months at this point. Like most RuneScape players, I enjoy watching multiple avenues of content, be it RuneScape 3 or Old School RuneScape. There is one content creator in particular that I've enjoyed watching, Nine Rain. His Iron Main series has been a fantastic twist to the main game, and something that I think would fit really well into RuneScape 3. So I messaged him, and received his blessing to utilize this style of gameplay for my own content. But, I'm also adding my own twist to it. Old School RuneScape has a game mode called Group Iron Man, where you play the game using an Iron Man restrictions, 
but you are able to trade with members of your group. This takes the isolation aspect out of Iron Man and allows you and up to four of your friends to challenge yourselves. For my twist, I'm going to be combining these two aspects with a series called Group Iron Main. Here's a little preview, and make sure you like, subscribe, and tell your friends about my content if you really enjoy it. See you next time.